Israeli raid on the flotilla heading for Gaza. They include Sydney Morning Herald journalist Paul McGough and photographer Kate Garrity. They've had their video footage confiscated. Another Australian is in hospital after being shot. Paul McGough and I were sent by a newspaper to uh, do a, a quite large um, investigative piece as bona fide journalists um, to observe and, and document. We knew that there was a, a very good chance that the Israeli Navy would, would obviously intercept. I thought they'd use tear gas. There had been no other indication, you know, in the past that they had used um, live ammunition, uh, let alone wounding or, or killing people. So I didn't think they'd kill people. Uh, I remember hearing the call to prayer go out on the Mavi Marmara. We were probably 100 to 150 metres to the left and at the rear of the Mavi Marmara. And all of a sudden, out of the, out of the sky and out of the water, because it, you know, it was very dark, out came all these um, Israeli attack boats. And then momentarily after, uh, explosions on the second deck at the rear. Um, basically... I was photographing all of this going on and then we were up alongside, kind of right alongside uh, the Mavi Marmara. The Mavi Marmara captain radioed the Challenger 1 vessel that we were on and uh, said to break away from the flotilla, to go as fast as possible, try to get to Gaza. Um, but he also said, uh, get the news out, get the news out. When I was uh, getting up, uh, the first Israeli commando on top of the boat, he um, lunged over the top of me, face down onto a couch. He forcibly seized uh, my camera off me. Paul and I were stating that we were Australian journalists. Uh, the first per the first commando said, we know you're from the Herald. Uh, the second commando said, yeah, no worries. We said, oh, you know, there are <laughs> Australian accents. And, um, yeah, the second commando said, yeah, no worries. is uh, one of the longest wars uh, since World War II. Like, five million people have died, you know, millions have been displaced. But in every story, or in several stories, there'd just be one line that said, you know, uh, sexual violence has been used as a, a weapon of war, or one in four women are, have been victims of sexual violence. And in the absence of a justice system, these women were incredibly brave and told their stories. Um, you know, they went into such detail that it was just, you were exhausted by the end of the day and you can only imagine, you know, having to ask people to relive and recount, you know, what obviously is probably one of the worst days of their life. And then we also interviewed two men who were uh, my, my militia, who had actually as, uh, one as a child soldier had committed um, heinous rapes and the other man, uh, a Mai Mai rebel, former rebel, uh, had also committed, you know, several rapes. The child soldier actually had committed 80 rapes in a six-month period, but he was a child when he did it. And so, um, yeah, it was just, his life is destroyed. And he was, uh, out of the two, he was the one that actually showed remorse and, and wished that he could, you know, uh, apologise and, you know, to all the women... But he also uh, now spends his time trying to go around and teach other men that sexual violence is, is wrong. So these are all different parts of, a, of an assignment that, you know, you, you, you never thought that you'd, when growing up that you would be sitting in the Congo listening to a child, you know, former child soldier.
talk about you know the heinous crimes that uh, he's committed and also what has happened to him as well. He as well was a victim 